Akshita, can you just confirm? Is my screen visible? Yes, Sachin, we can see that. Thank you. Great. Uh, welcome, folks. Thanks for joining. Uh, uh, you know, IDMC services overview and uh, session two, which talks about uh, cloud data governance, which is CDGC and CDMP and then MCC services, and also on uh, cloud data quality and profiling by Akshita. So basically, uh, today's uh, uh, you know services which talk about on a data governance and data quality point of view. So with that, let's get started with the presenters. <clears throat> Akshada, uh, who's a solution architect, having eight plus years of experience on uh, data quality, uh, cloud data governance concepts, and uh, Sachin Chain, who is having 15, pl pl uh, 15 plus years of experience on data management, data integration, uh, data governance concepts. With that, uh, I would like to uh, take you guys towards the, the services which we have for a data governance point of view. Cloud data governance and catalog, uh, we call it a CDGC, uh, uh, is again a service purely for data governance point of view. Uh, see, data governance, right? So, data governance is very much important in any of the organizations now, basically to ensure that the data is secured and uh, which is accurate, and most of the data which is available for the uh, to the users, I would say those are all consumers, and and the data should be in a usable format, right? Because data plays a very much a kind of important role. Uh, to drive any sort of business decisions, right? That's where data governance is very much important and uh, service CDGC, CDMP, uh, uh, the services which helps to build data governance in any of the organization, right? So <clears throat> when it comes to the use cases, probably I'll go with the, uh, the business users level, right? In any of the organization, right? Say even the CDO, CPO, right? So those users, they look at it like, you know, where is my data? Uh, uh, I mean, in the sense, what sort of data we have in the organizations? If I have to identify or probably understand what sort of data we have, and mainly they'll focus on critical data elements or like, you know, sensitive information which is present in an organization, right? How do I easily find out, uh, uh, you know, sensitive information which is present across the organization? and how can I protect it actually, right? So uh, those are all the things questions arises, okay? And even say as an example, a customer table which is present in an organization. So now, how do I find out who is the stakeholders or the owner of this, uh, say, customer information which is present in the organization? And if any changes are required, whom to contact immediately, right? And <clears throat> How is this contributing to the, uh, say, any sort of reports which are generating? Say we have a report, say, uh, a quarterly reports are probably a customer uh, information for a product related information and also the, we have a report actually as an example, right? So now I'm being the user, I need to, I need to identify what sort of sources which are contributing to generate this sort of report, right? Whether this report is accurate, how is the quality of the data? for this report, correct? So, uh, uh, and what sort of transformations have been applied on top of it so that we will get this sort of report, right? Who is mainly the stakeholders of uh, the resources which are contributing to that, right? All these questions arises actually, right? That's where the lineage comes into picture, right? For, uh, you know, to even to identify the impact analysis point of view, uh, say an, as another example, suppose if I have to uh, decommission some of the resources probably or like, you know, we have to move, uh, uh, say, the source, which is in an on-prem world, 
which have to decommission and then move to the cloud world now right uh, we will start using the cloud data warehouse now how how can i easily identify how it is impacting to to other flows or like you know if i have to change this one what are the things which i have to consider as a main priority point of view that's that's where governance comes into picture which helps you to easily identify how it is contributing to the other uh, 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 reports or uh, you know the flow of data contributing as a resource perspective right and on top of it right uh, what sort of uh, 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 you know policies have been applied uh, within the organizations how can i identify that that's where governance is the main thing so that you can you can have everything in a single place and to identify what is the 360 degree view of the data if i have to identify 360 degree of the the customer information which is present in a, a data set for any of the source <clears throat> how can i easily identify it to look at the single place itself right so and again as i mentioned on the privacy perspective on the sensitive information which is present how do i protect that data from accessing by any other users within the organization itself also right so so many questions will rise us right so and again cloud data governance and catalog helps the service helps the user to catalog their resources say that could be in a data warehouse or a file system data lakes right and even etl for the lineage perspective and all we do extract i mean the service helps you to extract those metadata informations into and showcase as a into a catalog point of view right so you will see the physical data physical assets where you have the organization has end to end like you know from the source say as an example of uh, snowflake you could extract the metadata information and then catalog it actually right now the uh, the the concept comes into like you know how can i enrich this one service helps you to you know enrich even physical data with the help of say business glossaries right that's where in any organization right the business users do have a well defined business terms from there itself like you know and the business users will start searching for some of the information critical information which is present in the organization that would help for to build some sort of like you know to identify some of the things correct so uh, those things you can build it in 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 in, in cdgc okay and uh, uh, you know during the metadata extraction itself we have an option to even tag it so that you can enrich those physical assets with the business terms right and also the classifications the sort to identify some of the say i need to identify pi information how can i do that right that's where the service helps you to even tag those classifications uh, in order to find out the sensitive information so just by searching it has a powerful search with the help of business names you can search it out classifications you can search it out whatever the tagged information you can search it out to get a complete information about that asset right so easily so you know search it and then identify the 360 view view of a particular asset right and also as i mentioned once we catalog source and then main thing is on the data quality point of view of course uh, we are using a data quality probably that could be in any of the uh, tool which is not uh, you know integrated with a governance perspective but cdgc helps within our platform platform idmc right it has say data quality which is tightly integrated with our cdgc so that one major thing is all about if a business user wants to create a sample rule he can just write it as a uh, uh, you know english statement and internally it will be converted with the help of clare ai engine it will be converted into a technical rule at the cdq and it executes there and fetches back the results and then showcase um showcase here uh, in our cdgc so the user can view even data quality results also here you know in a, in a cdgc itself right that's where we are mentioning it's a complete end to end 360 degree view of the data right and again what sort of policies have been applied so suppose tomorrow we have to change some of the policies because of newly adopted some sort of process and all we need to change some of the policies now how can i how can i identify the older policies how to replace that these are all the questions will definitely rise us right these are all different use cases right now when we have a governed data in place and we we can identify that policies which is already there and then we can say these are all impacted because of this policy now we are going to replace to have the same 
uh, uh, you know, same places, same assets where we have assigned to that. So we need to replace that actually, right? That's where it is. It is the operational cost you can reduce this once you have a governance in place, right? So that that's the reason <clears throat> you can uh, catalog the data, you can enrich the data with quality, you can see the stakeholders information, you can see the 360 degree view of it actually, you can see the lineage. Uh, this is how the lineage look like end to end and within the lineage itself, you could you could see the quality results. What are the classifications, whether it is related to the PI information or GDPR information, which is tagged under here, right? So you could see at the lineage itself. And also the quality results, which I was mentioning, correct? So as uh, again, the uh, data quality is again, uh, uh, the profiling and then data quality is and again, other services which Akshara is going to uh, talk about in depth on the quality point of view. But this is where I'm just showcasing that asset level where you could see the quality results based on different dimensions, completeness, uniqueness, validity and more. You could, uh, 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 even, uh, you know, get all the quality information and then showcase here at the at the, uh, the catalog level, right? And uh, even this is what I was talking about into a 360 degree view of the data. You could see what sort of policies have been applied, who are all the stakeholders involved here, and what are the other data sets which are linked here, business terms which are linked here end to end 360 degree view of it, you can see it actually. Right. And there's one more thing, which is a dashboard, which I showed first one, right? Business users, if they wanted to quickly identify some of the information with the help of search, they can create that and then they can, uh, once the search, the same search can be used at the dashboard or a widget level and uh, similar stuff can be accessed, right? Immediately when they log in actually, right? That's where the dashboard is provided to have a quickly available information so that it is uh, ready for a user kind of thing. Right, so a lot more on the data governance point of view. Uh, this service helps uh, to build those cataloging purpose and then get ready for a governance point of view. Uh, 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 you know, this ser service is very much useful. And once we have like, you know, governance in place, then that's where we go for how can we democratize that? Um, that's where the users will be thinking at, or the consumers will be thinking at it actually. How can I democratize, like, you know, I have my specific data, which is needs to be, uh, you know, required by other users also. How can I democratize this? So that's where we mentioned just have a governance in place with the help of CDGC, then you can go for a democratization. That is where I'll be talking over uh, in our next slide about the marketplace point of view. So with that, I would like to talk about some of the benefits of it actually. So once we have a governance in place and we have managed everything, we have cataloged and then we could see the lineage now end to end everything is there, right? So that's where you have a trusted data which is available in a single page itself, right? Which is very much important for, a, a, a you know, to drive any sort of business decisions for any of different transformation itself, right? You can quickly identify most of the sensitive data which is present in an, in an organizations by tagging some of the classifications, right? So that's where easily available uh, to identify the sensitive uh, data sets which is present in that. And once you identify that, you can take an action on how to, how to protect that data, correct? So you can easily collaborate with others, right? Because consumers and technical folks and the business users, everybody will get involved to this one and then they provide a lot of information on how we need that data to be available to the users. That's where the business requirements comes into picture, right? And moreover, so suppose if you consider if there is any changes are required. As an example, in the data quality results, we are seeing some of the quality results are very kind of less. Probably we need to see, we need to tune the, uh, uh, you know, the logic or anything, right? That's where technical folks will pitch in for them how to communicate that, right? We have a change management process that the workflows now we have allowed like, you know, to to define your own customized workflows point of view so that you can have multiple um, approval process so that you can tell the particular users or convey the message to the users through a process or a flow uh, to, to, to take some sort of action against some of the uh, results of the data quality, right? Or if any changes on the stakeholder level, now the assets, now the 
a data source is changed, say as a we move to cloud, now even some of the uh, stakeholders has to be changed. So you can involve, I mean, you can you can have this workflow process for the change management to involve right persons to there to give a, a proper access to them, right? So now the reason why we have this workflow and all change management process, that's where we have an audit mechanism there. You have a complete end-to-end -end picture about like, you know, who has changed, how we have changed, on what reasons we have changed. Everything is like, you know, it will be available in the same place itself, right? That's how we are governing the data for any each change perspective and all, right? And it has the unified capabilities across, you know, the governance and catalog point of view. Users can definitely, uh, 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 you know, search the powerful search mechanism which we have, right? It's a, uh, uh, and it's a hierarchies have been provided for a, uh, business glossary terms point of view and all, right? So that's all about on, uh, uh, you know, the, the cloud data governance on catalog, which is called a CDGC services. Okay, so now I will, I'll take you to, uh, 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 you know, the cloud data marketplace uh, service, okay? As I mentioned, once we have a governed data in place, how can I democratize it? In the sense, how can I share my, you know, the governed data, which is very much important for the other users who can consume it actually. As an example, uh, say I have a, 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 you know, the quarterly results or a, probably a data set could be a report or not, right? So now I need to publish this data to the marketplace or somewhere so that user can consume that data. Right. So how can I do this one with the help of our cloud data marketplace? It's it's basically a uh, cloud data marketplace is a is a kind of uh, self service uh, shopping cart. OK, so probably you might have seen any of the uh, Amazon shopping cart kind of thing and all. But here it's a shopping cart for uh, the data. Right now, once we go on the data, uh, uh, owner of specific data set. So he will publish that data to the marketplace, to this service, right? Now, what is the importance of this service? So as I mentioned, the consumer is really looking within the organization itself, right? He will be looking at some of the data, which is very much important for him to generate some sort of reports, or could be he have to use it for some other purpose, right? So how can I govern this? Who access the data, right? Who has provisioned the data? How can I govern that with the help of our cloud data marketplace, right? When a user or a, when an owner publishes the data to the marketplace, so it has a category wise, actually, he can create, customize the category saying that, say as an example of say, you have HR specific data or a product related data or, a, uh, 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 you know, the finance related data, correct? So you can categorize those things and then you can publish to the specific category, those data collections, and consumer, once you log in, he can search for that, right? That's where when he when he's like, you know, whatever the information he is looking at it, the data set or a report, if he finds it actually, right, then he put a request. OK, that's a workflow process. This is the one which I'm showing. There's a default workflow process which gets kicked off and it is go to the right uh, owner of the data sets for a approval process. Once he approves, then again, a technical uh, uh, you know, owner will be involved to provision the data, actual data. OK, then he can set like, you know, uh, some of the, uh, 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 you know, how to revoke that by by providing, say, specific uh, two months or three months if I have the those period of time so that I'll just grant those information uh, data to you. Now I have to revoke it, right? So that's where a technical person will come into picture to provision those things and all. OK. And again, the provisioning and all they can, uh, uh, you know, users can uh, definitely help uh, take a help of uh, CI application integration, which is present in our, uh, uh, you know, IDMC platform itself, uh, uh, you know, to, to actually provision the data, right? So once a technical guy is on a provisions the data and notification will go to those consumer and then he will get access to that, right? So that's how the basic thing about on a data marketplace the service which helps for a data democratizing it actually, right? And even the data quality results and all which are already there in the governance and then now the similar stuffs will be carried forward to the marketplace to see. Even consumer can see that 
what is the quality of this data? If it is less, then probably uh, it can convey that message that the quality of the results are less. Or if he needs any other data which is not available in the marketplace, then he can put a request. Uh, uh, he can he can put a request to the uh, you know to to get that the data is looking at it actually, right? That's where the marketplace comes into picture. Okay. So a lot of benefits for that. It's as I mentioned, it's a self-service oriented one and it's a shopping cart kind of thing for actual data, right? So basically on an overall picture for a governance point of view, data governance point of view, CDGC and uh, data marketplace plays a very important role uh, uh, to have this end to end governance picture in place, right? With that, I would like to go to another service, which is Metadata Command Center, probably. I mean, you might have seen that. We call it as an MCC. Uh, I would say it's a kind of admin related activities that the user has to do during the, you know, when I mentioned about extracting metadata, where we configure these details about the sources, and then we, we provide an option saying that, you know, if you have to have a profiling information available to the catalog, right? Profiling is again, to understand the statistics of the data, right? That's anyway, Akshada is going to cover up on the profiling point of view, but we have given an option to enable that as well. And also on tagging classifications and then business terms, those things are available, uh, you know, those configurations are available here in the metadata command center, but mainly creation of workflows in the, uh, are available in metadata command center and even uh, uh, uh you know the classification to identify the sensitive information um for that sort of use cases right so mcc allows you to create some sort of classifications which can be defined by a user itself those things are uh you know available in in an mcc and also you could see some sort of job monitoring stuff and all okay so that's basically about metadata command center okay so with this governance point of view and then now I would like to uh, call up Akshada, so who is talking about on data profiling, cloud data profiling, and then cloud data quality. Over to you, Akshada. Yes, thank you so much, Sachin, for covering the data governance related microservices and explaining the use cases. So, hello. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone present over here. I'm Akshada, and I work as a solution architect for data governance and quality domain of Informatica. I will now deep dive into the data profiling and data quality use cases and the associated microservices that IDMC platform offers. Right. So before we proceed into Informatica's or IDMC's offerings, let's deep dive into profiling, what data profiling is. Right. So today we have data getting generated from various systems, which includes legacy systems, relational databases, NoSQL databases, or different types of uh, files like structured files, semi structured, unstructured, real time systems, and whatnot. Right. So with huge amount of data being generated in different formats, it becomes very difficult to find out the right data that's needed for your analysis. Now consider a scenario where with the help of your IT team or with the help of right stakeholders, you have even identified the data that's needed for your analytics. But the main question arises at this point is where do I start? Right? How do I understand what's there in my uh, data? So to find out the data quality issues, it's important to understand the data metadata data or metadata and the nature of the data on which the quality checks needs to be done or needs to be executed right and hence in the overall data quality cycle when we begin work on the data quality projects we start with the profiling so data profiling in general is an assessment of the data and understanding the nature of the data and metadata right so the main purpose is to uncover the inconsistencies inaccuracies and missing data so that any data engineer or data analyst can investigate and correct the source so informatica's idmc platform offers a microservice which is called as cloud data profiling i'm pretty sure most most of you have heard of it or even used it so this cloud data profiling uh, Using this, users can create and run the data profiling task on data source to determine the quality of the data and understand the completeness, conformity, and consistency. So consider a scenario where you have been assigned with a new project and you have been asked to generate some reports or you have been asked to generate the report, which are quality reports. 
now to do that you will have you're not aware of what kind of incoming data you have or what is going to happen with the how many columns you have what's the data type nothing you're sure but you still have to generate a report right so at this point in time the first step is profiling OK, so the use case would be identifying the potential data quality issues in the data. So without knowing anything in the data, I just cannot apply the DQ checks on that. Right. So I first need to understand the content and the structure of the data. So profiling is the service which helps you understand the structure content and then you can apply the business rules on top of that. But the very first phase where I have to get the summary or holistic view of what is contained in my source data is uh, achievable using cloud data profiling. So you can have outlier detection also. So the moment you have incoming data or the moment you have source with you, right? All you have to do is just create a data profiling task on the source and you will get a holistic view. In the profiling results view, you will get to know how many columns you have, what is the metadata of the column, like what's the data type of the column, what is the name, how many null values you have, what's the uh, distinct number of values, what's the percentage of the values, I mean percentage of the null values, and then what's the frequency I have, like how many values I have repeated, how many number of times, right? So it gives you a holistic view of data and metadata both, which makes it easier for somebody who is looking at the data for the first time to understand the nature of the data. In case if there is any outlier in the data, the profiling holistic results view will help me understand what it is, like which is the outlier information. So without doing much, just by having a look at the results page, I get to understand information about my data. Now let's understand how one can get benefited from this profiling, right? So as I said, it's just one click thing. The moment you click uh, create a profile, you get a holistic result view or a results page. So uh, as you can see on the screen, it's a results page which tells me summary about different aspects. Like it tells me about columns. If there are any rules which I have applied, it shows the rule level details as well. And you can see there are different color codings as well. So you need not be a developer or you need not be a data owner to understand this view. Right, so uh, black is something uh, you will understand. Red is something you will understand. So just by having some decent color coding, so red is nothing but the null values. The uh, black is nothing but the non distinct values right so just a any any user business user will be able to understand based on this now uh, the first and most important is uh, as i said before you get the holistic view of the data present when the, within the source but how can i get benefited let's say i looked at it i got to know that there are some dq issues so if i look at customer id i got to know that there are uh, zero null values and there are all the values that i have are distinct values right so i got to know these insights so i'm pretty sure that this is a perfect customer id that this can be my primary key but let's say when I look at customer tier, I see some null values over here which are not expected. So I can take a uh, decision that there is some data quality issue with this column. Right? On top of that, let's say there are value frequencies that have been generated from the profiling results. These can be directly utilized as a dictionary. So consider an example where you have profiling or where you are profiling the sales data that's coming in for a particular year or a particular quarter and you want to create the dictionaries adhering to these countries, right? So the using values that you have received from the summary view of the profiling, we can create a dictionary of the country names. So let's say that within the profiling results, you can see there are 50 countries for which the sales was done. You can create a dictionary and for the next year or next quarter analysis, you can check if there is any outlier, right? So in this way, the data quality checks can be done based on your business needs. In addition to this, uh, the data quality or the cloud data profiling gives the clear insights about the probable DQ issues. So without you doing anything, the moment you execute profile for the first time, we offer the augmented data quality uh, results or augmented data quality where cloud data profiling generates the clear insights, which is nothing but AI generated insights for profiling results. So user can just uh, with a single click, user can accept or reject these auto generated rules based on the requirement. So let me quickly, Sachin, if you can just go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so there is another screenshot. So the earlier one was a summary view. Now, if you want to drill down at a particular column level, like let's say you're good with the column analysis. Now you want to do in-depth analysis of the column. You want to understand how many values have repeated, how many times that's nothing but the value frequency, right? In that case, you can further drill down or click on the column and you will get detailed analysis about the particular column. 
So once the profiling phase one is complete, we have understood the potential issues within the data and uh, what additional things I can do. I can create dictionaries. Now what comes next? Now I've understood now I have to define the rules which are adhering to the business needs that I have or which are adhering to the data quality pipeline that I need to build. Right now the profiling is something it's a first phase, right? So you can add different filters. Let's say that I do not want to run profile on the entire data set. So I want my sales data is for the entire year, but I want to do analysis only for two quarters. So I can have respective filter applied and I do not want manual intervention over here. I want to schedule this profile to execute on the first day of every quarter so I can schedule as well. So in addition to just execution, we can add filters and schedule this profile also. So mainly to get the holistic view, understand the completeness, consistency of the data, we use the cloud data profiling. Uh, Sachin, can you please go to the next slide, please? Yeah, now the next important microservice which comes hand in hand with the cloud data profiling is cloud data quality. So an experience report identifies or identified recently that companies globally feel that 26% of their data is inaccurate. In fact, the Gartner suggests that organization loses between 10 to 15 million of the US dollars due to poor data. Now in data mining, I think all of us know there is an 80-20 rule as per which 80% of the time is spent in addressing the data quality issues and only 20% of the time is spent in actual mining. Right, so these days there is a lot of organizational pressure to deliver quickly, efficiently, consistently, and moreover accurately. So when it comes to checking the data quality, the main aspect or the main reason is checking if the incoming data is fit for my purpose or not. Right, so if we hurry up in that, it's going to deal. I mean, it's going to impact the data quality. Right, it's going to lead to poor data quality and the reports that are based on the poor data quality can result into lost loss of revenue or reputational damage or some cases it, it might lead to the complete loss of confidence by customer. Right, and that's why the data quality becomes very crucial when it comes to uh, mining results because it ultimately impacts how business functions, right? It impacts your business decisions. It impacts your analytical goals and also obviously the business objectives. So CDQ or the cloud data quality allows one to identify the data quality issues that have been found during profiling or as a part of profiling, any of these. Or if you have just had a look at your source, and you have understood that this is my DQ issue, but this is my requirement. CDQ or the cloud data quality will allow you to define the rules which are going to check the quality against the, uh, the business requirement. So consider a scenario where you want to share the specialized services to your elite customers or you want to share details about a specific service offering to all your customers. Now it is important for you to have the data that fits for this purpose, right? So you want to know if do you really have the data that's needed to send out the information? Like, do you have all the valid email IDs that are uh, the, uh, I mean that are for the specific elite customers? So let's say that you even have the email IDs. Okay, let's say you have the information that's accurate, consistent. But do you know if these email IDs are valid and if they are uh, efficient enough? When I say efficient enough, are they uh, are they consistent? Like if a user A has email ID ABC, that ABC email ID, does it still belong to the user or he has some new email ID, which is uh, which is with respect to the timeliness, right? So we need to consider or we need to understand if the data that you have fits for the purpose. So there are different DQ dimensions like uh, completeness, uniqueness, timeliness. So entire data that you have or that business is going to use, you will have to check if that fits in within these data quality uh, units, right? So do you have the valid address data? Do you have the valid uh, addresses information of the employees and the customers which are valuable assets to your organization? Now, let's say if you have the addresses, uh, let's say you're not sure about the validity of it. So how do you check? So Informatica CDQ offers you address, address cleansing and verification, which is another uh, service or a data quality asset, which is called as a verifier, which allows user to validate and 
I mean, validate the input addresses based on the standard reference data that we have received from postal authorities. So your incoming data can be directly checked against the uh, reference data. I mean, against the respective um, respective files that we receive from postal authorities and based on your requirement you can check if the status of the address is valid or if it is deliverable if it is deliverable to what point i can deliver uh, can i deliver till the house number or i can deliver only till the uh, po box number so things like that so address verification is one of the use case that cdq solves in addition to that Another important data quality check is finding the duplicates. So provided that I have entire information, let's say I have a employee information, which is like 100% of my employee information, I feel is correct, but there can be duplicates. Let's say an employee has moved from one, one department to other department. So in that case, there are chances that, there, that this information gets duplicated, right? So I need to do a regular data quality check on my employee data as well as on the customer data that I have re I'm receiving, right? So deduplication is one of the important data quality asset or check. So it is nothing but calculating the degree of similarity between uh, two different records to find out the list of probable duplicates, right? So Informatica provides an asset which is called as deduplicate or uh, transformation which is called as deduplicate, which will help you identify if there are any duplicate records within the source system or within different uh, input data that I'm receiving. And also, once you identify if the data is deduplicate, I mean, if there is duplicate or not, you can further take decision whether you want to consolidate these duplicate records as one or you want to continue with the one which has a maximum, I mean, which has occurred maximum number of times. So based on different business logics or based on different business requirements, you can take consolidation decision. So that is another use case that CDQ solves. Next one is uh, something very important, which is data cleansing, right? So not every incoming data is cleansed data. So take an example that you have email ID as coming data and it might have some junk characters or not characters as such, but it might have some junk values. So validating your email IDs with respect to the domain is also one of the important use case or it could be something like the um, yeah, contact number, right? So when you receive the contact number information, uh, some users might add plus one and then followed by the actual number. So country code might be added and some users might not be added. So now you have to take a decision whether your business user or business needs that country code or you ju you're just fine with the respective phone number details, right? So these kind of decisions once you have or once you have these kind of rules defined in your uh, business unit, then you can define the DQ rules with the help of data cleansing within CDQ. So it could also be as, something as simple as converting my data from lowercase to uppercase. Let's say I have the country codes with me as a part of my input data, right? So I do not want to have everything in the lowercase. I want to convert things to uppercase. So that kind of as simple as this use case can also be implemented using the data cleansing or the CDQ data cleansing assets. Another thing would be data parsing. Now let's say that I want to parse my data, incoming data in a specific format. So let's say I want to do a token based parsing, right? I know that if ABC comes, that is nothing but I mean, in my incoming data, if ABC comes, that's an alphabet. So I want to mark it as alphabet. That's my label that I want to give, give as per my business definition. So this can also be done with the help of labeler transformation that Informatica offers, right? So if you have any uh, predefined values or delimited values based on your organizational needs, you can make use of labeler assets and mark, it, mark them as respective label. So a simple example would be I, I'm dealing with my sales data and I know that a field coming in a, uh, a particular column is a postal code. OK, my requirement is not to do, deal with the postal code, but just to identify that this field is a postal code, right? So I can use a labeler transformation and when, wherever I see the postal code coming in, I can just mark it as POCO because the numbers are not important for me. But what is important as per my business use case is to mark that field as postal code. So something like that can be done with the help of labeler transformation. Now, these are something uh, which are in depth about the data quality checks, but consider a simple data quality quality check where I have three different status of the customers that belong to my business. So I have customer uh, categories like diamond customer, gold customer and emerald customer. This is the criteria I have. 
Now I want to check if there is any other input which is apart from these three inputs, which is an invalid as per my data quality check. So how do I build this? Can I build this using CDQ? Definitely yes. So you can have a rule specification and you can have a dictionary created. So the example I gave has only three specific uh, values. So it becomes easier just to have one rule with three different values. But in case if I have a huge dictionary against which I want to check, I can very well create a dictionary. Now dictionary is nothing but predefined set of values, right? So it's like a um, reference data object that you can use and verify your incoming values against this reference data object to enhance the accuracy and usability of your data. So in that way, like CDQ provides these different assets which you can use and check the quality of your data. So uh, we discussed about the rule specification, dictionaries, verifier, cleanse transformation, the deduplicate asset, parser, and the labeler. Now, these all are the primary use cases of the data quality. But another thing that comes into picture is exception management. Now, let's say my data quality is completed. I have run the complete data quality check against my incoming data, and now I have found some exceptions. How do I deal with these exceptions, right? So understanding how to use the rule specification to identify the exceptions is something very important. So exceptions can be directly tagged to the profiling. Like I know this is my exception in my data as per the business rule. So any ex exception is basically nothing but some some record that contains unresolved data quality issues, right? So once I have an exception caught, Either I can send it to the respective business user to correct it, or I can just ignore that and continue with the uh, complete data quality process. So this needs to be taken. I mean, this there has to be an human intervention to take a decision based on the exception record that has been generated, right? So that is something uh, user has to manually do, but cloud data quality will allow you to identify the exception record. So that's another use case of uh, cloud data quality. Now coming to the benefits, right? What benefits CDQ offers? So one simple and the most important benefit is you have to build it only once. Once you have defined all your business rules on paper, you will have to convert them into technical rules. And once you build it, you can reuse them everywhere all over the data quality inputs that you have. So now if you have a, a use case wherein you want to identify or verify the addresses, the same rule can be applied against multiple incoming sources. So business can quickly define and execute the data quality rules as per the governance policies. So it's like use build ones and reuse everywhere. Right. Next one is uh, the consistent. Like you can have it used across the enterprise, like within the same org, cloud org. Once you have defined it, you can use it in data quality. You can use it cloud uh, cloud data governance. So anywhere in the IDMC microservices where a CDQ can be utilized, you can make use of this cloud data quality rule specification. Uh, next would be identifying the data exceptions. As I said, uh, exceptions are very important when it comes to DQ. Once the DQ phase is complete, you need to understand what is the data that's adhering to my quality and which data is not adhering to my quality, right? So data identifying and then taking actions because just identifying is not enough. When I have to take some, uh, uh, once I identify, I have to send it to the respective stakeholders to do the analysis. And that today can be done with the help of a CSV file. So once all the exceptions are identified, you can push it to the CSV file and the respective stakeholders can download that and then re revisit them. So they can actually identify if this is really an issue or it's something else. Right now we, we discussed about dictionaries, profiling, uh, verifying the addresses, finding the deduplicates. Now, what if I want to identify or I want to see how my data quality has progressed over a period of time. So let's say I have implemented the DQ in my organization from last six months I have been implementing. OK, so I now today I want to monitor or I want to measure how the data quality has changed over the period of time. So let's say I'm running data quality against source one for six last six months. I want to understand how it has progressed so I can create a scorecard. 
right? Scorecard is nothing but having a graphical representation of how my rule or how my data quality has progressed, how it has changed. So it, it gives me a holistic view of complete uh, changes to the scores of the data quality. So whenever I have to continuously monitor and measure the data quality, we can use the scorecard. So as you can see on the screen, this is one small snippet of the scorecard. So you can see there are different rules and dimensions of the data quality. So I can see two different validity rules have been applied against the scorecard, one co consistency and one accuracy. If you see on the right or if you see down, it shows me the latest score for that particular rule. But if I click inside or if I click on the rule, I can see how this latest score has changed from last five executions. So today I see the score is 96.47. But if I want to see the last execution score, I can very well see that as well. So it gives me a holistic view or it gives me a view wherein how I can I can monitor how my data quality has improved or degraded over a period of time. And you can also see the total number of rows as to how many rows have. And the rule has been executed against how many rows, how many are failed, failed as in those do not adhere to the data quality uh, rule that I have applied and how many have actually executed. Now, another thing that I missed to mention earlier is cloud data profiling. So similar thing can be done in the cloud data profiling as well, wherein let's say I have run profiling today and I'm running after a month after one month. Now I want to check how my profile has progressed, like how my data has changed within one month. So I can do the comparative analysis of the profiles as well. So it will help me understand the incoming data that was there one month ago and incoming data that I have today, how it has changed. So maybe a month ago I had 50% of the unique values, but today I have 80% of the unique values, which is a good decision or which is a good uh, sign for my data. So which tells my data is healthy, right? Another thing would be uh, if I if I have to compare from the uh, outliers perspective, right? So one month ago I had zero outliers, but today I have three outliers. That means I need to check what's happening in my source data. So these kind of things, these kind of decisions can also be taken or inferred with the help of CDP and CDQ. Now, another point which I wanted to mention is rule specifications. So based on any requirement that you have against the columns, you can have your business rules converted into technical rules with the help of maplets or with the help of uh, different dictionaries or with the help of sing simple operators like equal to less than greater than or you can even define within the values. So based on your requirement, you can have rule specifications defined and add them to adhere with your DQ uh, business data quality rules. So this is uh, mainly on the data quality and data profiling side. So data quality is not one step implementation as such, right? It's an iterative process. So we need to continuously monitor and update based on the requirement. So I think Sachin also covered when it comes to data governance and cataloging. You, we have an option to enable data profiling and data quality at the CDGC level as well. But how is that different from this? This might be a question that might be coming in multiple stakeholders' mind. So how CDQ is different from CDGC? Right. So when you trigger a profiling from Metadata Command Center or in the governance world, what happens is profiling and quality gets applied to the bulk of the objects. So any data element or any data object that's present within that particular source system, let's take an example, Oracle system, the data quality and data uh, profiling gets applied to all of them. OK, now it gives you a summary view of this is a value frequency. These are the number of objects. But on top of that, if you want to do additional analysis, like you want to do in-depth analysis on a particular source, that is when you come to the CDQ or CDP, and then you do the in-depth analysis on particular column or particular table. OK, so when you call the profiling or DQ from CDGC, it again gives ultimately called to the same microservice. It's just that when you have to do in-depth analysis, you want to do additional cleansing, parsing, exception management, we go for the CDQ or CDP as a service. So I think that's all I had to cover from CDP and CDQ perspective. So that's what I wanted to tell that it's an iterative process and we need continuous monitoring and update based on the business requirement because timeliness of DQ is very important. So today's business requirement might need uh, a particular measure to be this way, but after one year, the measure might change, right? So continuously monitoring the business requirements against the data quality measures are important and hence CDQ along with CDP plays an important role. 
So with this, uh, we have covered Informatica's IDMC offerings for data governance and catalog along with quality. So we are open to take any questions or queries around the services. Uh, I think you can post your questions in the Q&A session. Yeah, thanks, Akshita. So any questions or anything, guys, please post it on the Q&A session. And uh, one more information is all about on after the third session uh, about the next is our master data management services. After that, we will be having a office hours for Q and A as well for all the services. Uh, any questions or anything which you guys have it after the sessions also probably you guys can join for a uh, office hours as well. Or uh, even I would request please reach out to your uh, respective uh, CSMs. If you have if you guys have any sort of follow up questions or uh, even need to understand in a deep dive on this, any of the services. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, um, then yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for attending uh, the session. And probably we are closing it off. Thank you. Bye-bye.